it seems like a good place to start because my my heart broke a little bit over the last couple of days, Macal. If I'm not going to lie, let's to you. talk about it here because I don't let's... think you're alone. I, I believe the blue. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I believe the Blue Jays talk right now is as hot as it's ever been. I mean, you and I have been through a lot together when it comes to the Jays. We've gone through the years and we went through a run and then we went through the rebuild. Like right now, this moment, it's as hot as it's ever been. Uh, I, don't I don't know if I totally me. agree with that. I mean, I, I can make the argument the Anthopolis trade with the Marlins maybe garnered more talk than this team. I don't know what it is about this team. I think I snuck up on people the fact they were in the playoffs. Actually, you brought it up. You brought it up on this show how some people just didn't really know the format. Were that familiar? But didn't um, you, you think and I the were last talking about two it. days, the two days was full. Oh, the days of, themselves, it's yes. typical. To me, it was typical. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you there. Typical Jays hot talk. Typical. Like, it was a feeling. There's some, for some reason, the way that when the Jays are in the postseason, it's every day or every other day. It's unique. It's very, the very it unique. Yeah, we're going to go through the way it went down. But the way it went down caused for a lot of hot take. I'll just call it hot takery. It's the lead. It's brought to you by the new season of Family Feud Canada, hosted by our friend Jerry D on CBC and CBC Gem. And I've heard through the grapevine, you and I might be doing a fast money. Doing anything fast is my, my forte, McAuliffe. I mean anything. I wish we were on TV so that I could look at you and say, That's why what? I said it. That's why huh? I said it. The Blue Jays' postseason was pretty fast. It ended almost as quickly as it began. Kind of like the too much information we got from Sid Sixero. It's true. Two games, two games up, two games down, and the jam is done. A lot of talk around Hyunjin Ryu when we last left you on Monday after his announced that he was going to be held back to start game two. Well, that game two, seven runs, three earned, grand slam that had most folks scrambling for the flicker. He lasted just 45 pitches, an inning and two thirds, and it was basically over. Again, kind of like too much information from Sid Sixero. With the... T- <laughs> With the, mm. with the team leaving, Racist Taiwan by. Walker. Racist on, by with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Taiwan Walker never got off the bench. At least that's what a lot of folks were talking about when it was all said and done. How disappointing were those two games for you? I mean, look, if we're if we're just talking about the two games, it Maybe was it was embarrassing. I can phrase it yeah, no, way well, I know I know where we're going after. I'm I'm not afraid of that. So let's talk about the two games because I have two very separate opinions today. The first opinion is what the hell was that? I I have rarely seen a team who were doing the good things at the plate that their manager and hitting coach and hitting instructor and hitting consultant Dante Bichette, whatever his title is, wanted them to do. Patience, work account, get on. It was deer in headlights stuff, Tim. Everyone wants to talk about the pitching, and I get it. Shoemaker out after 35 pitches. Okay, we'll we'll get to that. We'll get to Hyunjin Ryu on five days rest. Fine, we'll get to that. The Blue Jays lost. Check that. The Blue Jays got embarrassed in Tampa because they were deer in headlights at the plate. Period. Period. That first inning yesterday with Kevin Biggio, and Bo and Guriel, I think it was a seven pitch first inning for Tyler Glass now. One of the one of the better pitchers in the game. Didn't have that great a year, actually. His ERA was pretty high. Tim, I couldn't I I, I said to myself, I, I don't know how, how far the gap is between Tampa and the Jays in earnest, but it's still pretty damn big. And I was just really di- disappointed at how they approach things at the plate. I was really disappointed. I, 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 I'm not interested in that pitching discussion. I'll have it with you because that's our job. But I am not interested in going down that rabbit hole of a non-reason why they got their ass handed to them in two games. They were scared at the plate. 
They didn't know what to do. No one could catch up with a fastball. Nobody, except for Danny Jansen. And I was, it was a shocking offensive performance. Yeah, Absolutely the, shocking. The, the Jays scoring three runs in two games and people talking about the pitching makes me want to makes me want to makes me want to vomit in my mouth a little bit. It makes me want to ask what world I live in and why have I chosen this occupation. However, there's a bottom line here and I believe the bottom line after the two games. Maybe that's the question that I should have phrased to you. What's your bottom line after watching the Jays season come to an end? Because for me, I have two ways to go on this. One is how could you not be happy with the season you just saw? And I want real answers if you're out there. And two, the Jays found out a lot about what they are. And with a series against a team like Tampa, what they need to be. Like, let's not, let's not gloss over the fact. And I don't know if you were doing this. That two games against two pretty damn good pitchers does not tell you what you need to know about a baseball team. That's why people call the playoffs a crapshoot in baseball, especially in best of threes. Right? The Jays had the youngest position player group in all of Major League Baseball and had, what, the seventh best offense in Major League Baseball over 60 games that went cold in a two-game sample size where they chased like they hadn't chased much before. And I have stats to back that up. But right now, I want to have the conversation of what I... Like, we found out what they were over 62 games and where they need to be over the last two. Yeah, we found out what they were over a half a season. Right. Less, less than half a season, right. Um, listen, I'm still very positive about all of this. And, and I know every Jays fan who could jump all over him yesterday, who still doesn't buy it did with glee. You could see it very easily. What, what I'm going to take away from this season is because I'm not, I'm not Charlie Montoyo. I can't be positive about everything. I'm not, I don't have that gene breaking news, Tim. I don't have that gene. So it wasn't perfect, but this team is growing. This team is absolutely growing. Don't tell me taking three of four from the Yankees when you kind of had to isn't relevant. Yeah. Don't tell me that a team that can go out and has a farm system to pick up some arms on free agent deals isn't relevant. Don't tell me that Nate Pearson looking like he looks sometimes isn't relevant. Damn, that's relevant. Maybe not as a starter right now, but that's a positive. This team is moving in the, in the right direction. No fan wants to hear that. No fan cares to hear that. It is very much executive speak. But well, why, I, why don't fans I, I, want I have to hear to that? Because, because, no, I, because I, I think there's do. a segment of fans that I think there's a segment of fans that definitely want to hear that. I think there's a segment of fans who, who will never be around to Shapiro and Atkins. That's what I, that's what I believe. Now, you win a playoff series here or there, all that changes. There are so certain that, fans who don't think Charlie Montoyo is the guy. Correct. They, they just, they just don't you're believe correct. it. You're correct on both accounts, but that, that's a segment of the just as the just as the segment that's writing in and saying, "I'm okay with the season that just transpired." There is a segment yelling and screaming about other things. Like there are several segments of the fan base. We'll try and roll through them all, but I think you and I need to have the conversation and let the chips fall where they may, and then let others in on the conversation. Our so, show, damn it. I got questions for you. Is Hyun Jin Ryu an ace? Yes. Yes. I believe he's an ace. Uh, at times yesterday, he looked like a horse's ace, but he looked, Dan Plezak, but he looked, he, for the most part this season, um, take the middle part and the most important game of their year against the Yankees. That's an ace to me. I, I will, I will make, I will give him the label and listen, you gave him $80 million. He has to be your ace. He has to go out there with some level of confidence and have a team trust him to, to do that. Now, I think I know where you're going here, but I'm not going to go there yet. 
I, I, he didn't, he didn't pitch well yesterday. All right. That's it. He didn't pitch well. He didn't pitch well to start the year. He, he had a, he bombed to end the year. But I, I really, really, really like what that guy brings to the table because I still respect dudes who don't throw 98 and get a bunch of people out. Yeah, but that's, that's, and that's not what I'm and, talking and, about. And he's I'm talking about an ace. I'm talking about what, so if, I trade, if, I tra- if I traded you or gave you the opportunity to trade Blake Snell or Tyler Glass now for Jinjin Ryu for the start of that series, would you have done that? Like, well, I know well, why. I know why you spent ace, twenty. He's an ace in Toronto's world. Let me rephrase right, that. Right, but just because he's, an he's ace your in oh, no, but just because yeah. he's your ace doesn't mean he okay. is an ace. Then how would you define him? I'd say he's a really good pitcher, and that if you want to compete at the highest levels in Major League Baseball, you're going to have to do better. And I know sometimes it's hard to follow all of baseball, so I can do it for the audience out there. But look at the best teams. Look at the winners. Washington last year, Scherzer, Strasburg, Cor- like Corbin had Cy Young votes in 2018, 2019. Annabelle Sanchez, 2018 Bo Sox, Chris Sale, David, David Price, Eduardo Rodriguez. They had Porcello and Ivaldi too. You're not going to ignore 20, Houston, are you? 2017 Houston. Astros, they cheated. Yeah, no, I'll say that. Justin Verlander, Charlie Morton, Dallas Keuchel, Lance McCullers Jr. I think you get the picture. And what the Jays have right now is Hyun Jin Ryu, who is really good. I don't know if he's an ace. I don't know if he's of the guys that we just threw out there. But if he's your second or he's in, there's someone just as good as him, then you're in a better spot. And there's a lot to talk about over the next little while. And Matt Shoemaker and Robbie Ray did what an ace does anyway. They gave up one run over six innings. Especially in this day and age, six innings seems to be the max. Six innings is like ten innings. <laughs> yeah, six innings I'm is watching those White innings. Sox A's game today. It's insanity. McAuliffe, it's don't, insanity. Guys are getting pulled after an inning or less. Right, right. But don't give me the... He got twenty million, so he's an ace. Like no, I'll, I'll give 15, you this. That's fifteenth in Major he, League Baseball. Okay, let, let me let me beef up the argument then. He's an ace because the only guy that had more NL Cy Young votes than him last year was Jacob Degrom. Does that work for you? If not for Jacob Degrom, this guy is a Cy Young Award winner in the National League. Is that an ace? Uh, was he an ace in his team last year? So so we're moving the target a little bit. No no no. It, it, the, both can be true and. And you don't have to be completely right. <laughs> no, I want to be. I want to be completely right. I know right. you do, and I am I know completely you do. right. So then, no, but it's so an then tell interesting me. point, Timmy. But it's so interesting point. Tell me, was he the best? Pl- was he the best pitcher in his Hyun- team last year? Hyunjin Ryu finishes second in Cy Young. Would I take him over Walker Bueller? Hell's no. no. Would I take him over Clayton Kershaw? Not in the postseason. Hell's no. But that doesn't mean nothing. Hyunjin Ryu had the best National League ERA. I know, that, but what that, I'm telling that, you is that your team something. needs to have more than one of those guys. Well, yeah, they, I, I'm not. I, that's not what I'm debating with you. What I'm saying is, right now, this is the guy you lean on. Is Nate Pearson that guy in three years, hopefully, or less? Oh, hopefully, three three years. You can't wait hopefully. that long if you want to. If you really want to compete, well, I'm you just can't saying. Wait that long. And what right I'm saying is, as a believer, he looks really good as a starter. I'm not sure yet. What I'm, I'm sure. saying is, you can't be a competitive team. In this league, where you're look, now looking at the Yankees and the Rays moving on, and say you can do it with this starting rotation. Now, I love Matt Shoemaker, and I hope that Robbie Ray found something here that he didn't have in Arizona. Not sure he did. But I'm if you sure. add, but if you add one more, it makes what you need from Hyun Jin Ryu a little bit more manageable for a guy. I'm- as good as Hyun Jin Ryu. And for I'm not, me, I'm not fight the notion that you need good pitchers. And for I'm me, an gonna... ace is you stop it in the postseason. You stop it in the postseason. You're able to deliver. Now, I, I get it. We're going to talk about Clayton Kershaw a little bit later on because he's starting game two for the Los Angeles Dodgers. But that's why he takes the heat that he takes because even though he has stopped it, he it's also hasn't. Game. He's a Hall of Famer. That's why he takes the heat that he takes. And he sometimes looks like a complete fifth starter out there in the postseason. It's crazy. So for me, if you're looking at this team, it is 
a, a meat of the order hitter and another top line starter because what you saw from the rest was really good. And what you saw from the kids, I would like that meat of the order hitter to be a veteran that could ease the pressure on these kids because, as you said, they looked a little bit like they were in their first postseason because because they were. They were in their first postseason. Game they one, they had 31 swings at pitches outside the strike zone. Third highest total of the season for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, it was also Blake Snell, who was pretty good. But that's not what you want to see in game one of the postseason. I, I think... And I'm gonna we're gonna ask Kevin Barker a little later, Tim, because I he's been in that box. I haven't. Um, was that Blake Snell and Tyler Glass now last couple of days, or was that the Jays? Both. Because Tyler Glass now really kind of threw a lot of 98 up, and there wasn't a lot else going on there. There was that that hook that would come down. He doesn't have much else. That hook that came down is vicious, but there was a lot of you can't hit this. And I don't know how much of that was glass now and how much of that was the inexperience that you and I are talking about. I was just, flo- I was dis- I really wanted Bo to play well because of what he said prior. <laughs> I just really wanted him to go in there with that flow and be trending on MLB social media accounts and hitting doubles and just doing fun, fun, fun stuff. By the way, what was with the music they were playing at the trop when guys were at two strikes? That ominous stuff. Did you pick up on that? No, I didn't. Uh, I just was... I noticed that the crowd noise was a lot louder, but that's a bad joke. <laughs> it's a good joke. It's not a bad joke. I'm uh, so, sorry. Just to wrap up Yunjin Ryu, I understand the criticism out there right now. I still think this is a guy that is going to help them in a major league way. Well, he, they're in the major leagues. He it better be in the major leagues. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think I think he is a guy who you will be able to trust for seasons to come. I, I hate saying playoffs because baseball is the biggest crapshoot ever. So I detest, I detest saying he's going to be a playoff performer for you. I don't know. I don't know. But regular season, don't jump off his train yet. Okay, That's, so then let's get really the, soon to me. Really soon. Let's get to the next two big stories, which was one, Bo Bichette, and two, Matt Shoemaker being lifted after three innings and 35 pitches, 27 of which were strikes. You can go whichever way you want. Uh... The, I think I think the shoemaker conversation is going to take a, a bit more time between you and I and, and the listeners. So let's let's just wrap up Bo Bichette here. I, I'm I'm a huge fan. I I I, I kind of just I laid it out for you already, but I'll just reiterate. Um, it was it was poor. Those guys know it was poor. And Steve Simmons really wanted a reaction in the Zoom post game last night from certain people, and he he almost got it. But good for Bo, the composed young man. Um. Again, three three errors all year. He has two yesterday. Yeah. But they were big, you know? And I think and I don't think it's unfair to him to criticize that specific performance. And not just him. I hated Kevin. That was the worst Kevin Biggio at the plate I've ever seen. Yeah. No patience. It's it's it, the an, the antithesis of oh, what Kevin Biggio is. Yeah. You know, you know, Tim. Like this is a yeah. guy who takes more pitches than anybody. Um, on base of like 370. And he just was out there in four pitches. It was ridiculous. Or first pitch swinging. I, I think Bo will learn from this. He should take slack for that, but I think he'll he'll be better for it. And uh, to be flying the wall of the Dante Bo conversation afterwards, because Dante <laughs> is, a, is a big man. But that's Tim is a big man. But that's I mean, this is all zero percent intimidated, right? Like I'm glad he said yes. it. I doubt he'll so say it again, but I'm glad he said it. Show me an athlete that says they're intimidated going into a series, and I'll show you a loser. And yes. Next time, because freezing cold takes comes down with the hammer, he will have a healthy respect for a very good team. But we believe in ourselves. Like Crash Davis will sit him down and teach him that. How to punch a dude with his non-throwing hand. Maybe if there's time, the lyrics to try a little tenderness because she may get weary. Weary. Not woolly. Just happy to be here so I can go out and help the ball club. Like that'll happen next time around. But the first time, I don't mind that he said it. And if you show me the guy who doesn't want to say that, I'll show you a loser. So give it to me every time. Now Matt Shoemaker lifted after three innings, 35 pitches, 27 of which are strikes. People are yelling and screaming. And because the Jays lose, this still becomes the topic of conversation 
after the Jays go down in two scoring three runs. Do you, do you understand why this is still a topic of conversation? And I believe it's because people think that this is the future of this franchise and they're not ready for it. They're not ready for it because it didn't work. And it didn't, didn't work from a one loss standpoint. I'm not talking about the specific act didn't work because Robbie Ray and Matt Shoemaker gave up a run. So statistically, it's tough to say that was a failure. The one thing, the one thing you have to think about is what does everyone else in the dugout and on the field think when that happens? That's relevant to all of this. I know what the numbers are telling you, and I know Matt Shoemaker's just back off the injured list, making a second start. I get all that. But there is a psyche that needs to be looked after from a competitive group if you do things that so blatantly don't make any sense. Like, I, I, I would have loved to have known, and, and I didn't hear anyone asked it, a post-game, like, did the rest of the team know this was going to happen, regardless of how he looked? I'd love to know that. Because if they didn't, they did, they did look a little shook giving up the run in the next half inning, Tim. I'm, I'm, let's be honest. It looked a little weird. Ah, that's people just people at home were... Just, people... Go ahead. That's just Teoscar taking a lazy route to a ball with a guy who has Maybe. speed. Maybe. Like, that, that's a leadoff triple. That's the only hit that Robbie Ray gave up. Yeah. A leadoff triple that turns into a run, six innings, one run. Robbie Ray gives up one hit. Like, I think if you map that out for any Jays fan before the game, they would all take it. Their eyes just pop out of their head when they see 35 pitches. And Charlie Montoyo told us after that the plan was to get him out after two. Imagine if they did that. They gave him the extra inning. Charlie Montoyo said after they, they gave him, him they an him extra out. inning because he looked so good. Can you imagine if they didn't give him the extra inning? I just... <laughs> Tim, I, I guess here's, my, here's what on. I'll listen to. Here's what I'll listen to. I, I don't even know about the rest of the team because the rest of the team, the rest of the team remembers the seven-inning doubleheader game that Shoemaker started against these very same Rays on August 16th, and none of the fans and a lot of the media didn't, where he cruised through three and then gave up a three-run fourth inning that cost the Jays maybe the game. It was a 7-5 final, but they had a 2 nothing lead. He went out for the fourth. Look, it was cruising. Looked just as good as he did, maybe even better than he did in game one of this series and gave up a home run and it was three, two Rays, and the Jays and the Rays never looked back. I will listen to maybe your argument. I will listen to leave them for one more inning. And then Ray ends up getting you to seven instead of six. I will listen to you brought in Ray to face a righty. You could have let shoemaker come out and do that though. I'm sure all the people being and moaning all knew what Robbie Ray was told. Like Robbie Ray has made one appearance out of the bullpen in his last six seasons combined. Do we all know what he was comfortable with? Like in all the conversations that we have had about this stupid thing. And I think it's stupid, honestly, because the result, the shoemaker thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's stupid. The result suggested that the point is moot and in all these conversations, did anyone know what the Jays told Robbie Ray and his one career appearance, excuse me, his one appearance out of the bullpen in the last six seasons combined? Because there's a suitable warm up for a starter, and some guys can't be bullpen guys because they don't know how to get ready, right? right? And that was never brought up. And to me, I think it was a big point that should have been brought up. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, Tim, in terms of Robbie Ray, because the week before he was asked about coming out of the pen, he did mention that 2017 game with the D-backs, that only appearance that you're, you're, you're um, citing, yeah. and he didn't seem to hate it. Now, I, I, again, I don't know what, was, what the internal discussions were specifically, but he seemed no like a guy asked. who didn't, 
He didn't. It's one no of one these things that, that bug me, but, right? Like after, previously, like people, I had heard him talk about it. People yelling and screaming about what they think, and no one actually knowing some of the very key components about what they're yelling and screaming about. But right. here we are in 2020. 